Joining us now, former Council of Economic Advisors Chair Glenn Hubbard. Glenn, I I'm not sure if it's Amazon itself so much as I'm wondering, is this the lagging effect of earlier interest rate hikes starting to play out? And if so, what do we look for next? Well, it's a good question. I think, yes, that's partly it. The tech sector, as you noted, had gotten ahead of itself in terms of employment. Monetary policy takes a while to work through the economy, and we're starting to see that. The Fed usually pushes until something breaks, and something broke in the banking problem we saw. And there's also the issue of the job market, which is held up, but I think will weaken. The probability of a recession faster is now much higher, uh, not because of Amazon, but because of likely credit problems uh, with the banking crisis. So just in, in terms of what we're seeing with this banking crisis, on the one hand, you've got interventions that are designed to inspire confidence in the system, to bring stability. On the other hand, the fact that they're needing it, needed at all raises concern and, and causes perhaps more questions than answers. So when you see a name like FRC, First Republic today, trading down multiple halts, trading down 40, almost 45 percent, the banking industry saying, Basically, it's going to move in and continue to help this bank. Are we towards the end of this crisis, or is it still too soon to tell? Well, it's too soon, but I, I think it's likely that the Federal Reserve and the FDIC and the Treasury have gotten ahead of it. The new Federal Reserve program, I think, is very useful. And there will have to be consideration of raising deposit insurance limits. Part of my concern about credit is that if small and mid-sized banks feel that their depositors want to leave them for larger banks, that may have credit constraints on small and mid-sized businesses around the country. The Fed's aware of that and is certainly working on it. So, Glenn, that's really what I'm wondering about. Last week we had Bill.com CEO Rene Lassert saying that, uh, yeah, there is some turbulence in, in the uh, lender's willingness to extend credit to small and medium-sized businesses. So... If the Fed does hike uh, 25 basis points this week, as expected, and uh, we also have this restriction in credit availability, does that also increase the chance of a deeper, more pronounced recession? Well, let me take that in parts. I think the Fed should be continuing to raise rates. Inflation is way too high, well above the Fed's objectives. Financial stability is another matter, and the Fed has other tools. And this is why the discussion of the new Fed facility uh, and also per perhaps raising deposit insurance rates. I do think we'll see a recession faster. How deeper uh, it is, is is another story, but I, I think it will be faster than people had thought. So if you were putting politics and political affiliations aside, if you were advising the president right now, what would you be saying? Well, again, I think the Fed's facility is a good job. I would be doing a top to bottom review of banking supervision and see how we had a failure of this magnitude. And then I think we have to have serious consideration for a temporary period of a deposit insurance ceiling increase, not all the way to infinity, but to something that might help small and mid-sized banks weather the crisis. But Glenn, we don't know if there is a restriction in the availability of credit. We don't know how hard the banks themselves are going to slam on the brake, how much money they feel like they need to keep for themselves and, and how much uh, an overall economic slowdown affects that as well, right? So how much uncertainty does that feed into uh, the, the speed at which the economy slows down? Well, it's a great question because uncertainty is a huge factor in downturns, both from business people deciding to invest less and bankers and other lenders deciding to be more cautious in extending credit. That's why I think what the Fed and the Treasury need to do is get out quickly and reassure people about the system. After all, even before Silicon Valley Bank, we were headed toward rate increases and recession. The question is not adding a credit shock on top of it. I wonder what you think happens, how the situation evolves from a regulation standpoint in terms of this idea of insuring all deposits. I mean, we certainly see this implied backstop, but officials like stopping short uh, of actually saying that they would that they would backstop uh, other depositors if other banks failed because quite technically they do not have the legal jurisdiction to do that. Do, do you expect we're going to see some more legislation around this? And if so, what is that going to mean? Because at the end of the day, it's still going to come back to taxpayers, whether it's direct or indirect. 
Well, that's the thing. When I hear our leaders say there's no bailout that affects taxpayers, of course, that's not true for a myriad of reasons. I don't think it's wise to take the deposit insurance cap completely off as a permanent matter, uh, nor, do, nor would I even do that in a temporary matter. But I think raising it so that it protects more individuals and businesses in a crisis for a shorter period of time is something Congress may well want to consider. Glenn Hubbard, we appreciate the insights today. Thanks for joining us.